Hey everybody, it's Michael with Barry Hiking Guys. Give me that information, give me the knowledge. In this video, we're going to be talking about the beginner's hiking top 10 checklist. And there's so much stuff out there. What do you buy? Who do you trust? And where do you start? We're going to talk all about that in this video. Stay tuned. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about the beginner's uh, hiking top 10 checklist. And there's so much stuff out here that we have that I can go ahead and discuss with you guys. And we're going to go through and we're going to break down everything we can. Now I got my field notes. Confidential field notes. You see that? We're going to start with number 10. A lightweight rain jacket is a great way to go. You want to get something pretty light. You want to get something that's roughly about a pound um, or less if you can. You don't want to go too crazy, don't get too heavy, you know, but I always recommend having a lightweight rain jacket, especially when you start getting into more of the rainy season. Rise of my Mountain Hardware Jacket, I put this through some major storms, held up great. I had it for about five or six years. It's pretty much retired now, but it was a good jacket as long as it lasted. And this is the membrane of my other jacket. You want to make sure this membrane is in good condition. Once it starts tearing up, it pretty much depletes the usage of the jacket. Um, if you're wearing a t-shirt or your skin's in contact with the membrane of the jacket, it will actually decrease the value of the jacket. You want to make sure you have a long sleeve on. And this is my backpack jacket. Uh, this is the other jacket that I had to replace it. It's an REI jacket. The co-op worked great. It's, it's already put up uh, in pretty serious conditions and held up perfectly. So I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, great test there. And then you want to make sure that um, you're getting it and it's waterproof in several different layers and also that it's sealed waterproof within the zipper. If you got water coming through that zipper, you got a big problem. This is a number nine survival kit. It's always important to have it in a gear set. You want to have those matches with some cotton swab on there, a flint, great thing to do right there. Also, a little bit of protein bar. You never know how far that's going to go. I'll talk more about that in a minute. You got your compass, you got your portable aqua tablets, emergency blankets, chapstick. Sunscreen's not on there, but you should have there too. Electrolytes. Um, and then you've got your water filter. Water filter is just fine. You really don't need the tablets. You gotta wait 30, 45 minutes for them anyway. I just say the filter. I've tested those. They're awesome. The Sawyer makes great products. Um, and that's that uh, little set there. And there's the matches there. I kind of keep those in the little waterproof seal. Although I really don't need to do that. It's like an extra weight. Compass there. And then the protein bars are great just in case you get to eat something and you've got like a day or two out in the wild and you need food. You don't want to go catch it. Um, and then if you do need to catch it, you got fish in line right there, hooks, weights, a whole bit. And then there's a Sawyer one more time for you. Awesome product. I did a video on it. Great stuff. And then uh, Paracord is, you can do a million things with Paracord. Having a little bit of water cord there is perfect. Also, I don't have a blade on here. Sunscreen I didn't have as well, but it's also a good little thing to have. Uh, the Sea to Summit. Good little bag there. Four liter. I keep everything in there so it stays waterproof. Roll that on up and I'm good to go. Oh yeah. It's game on. Or <laughs> when you need toilet paper and you're out in the middle of nowhere and you've got it, nothing says yes better than that. And when you don't have it, nothing says no better than not having toilet paper. <laughs> Alright. So the medical kit number eight. Great thing to have in your little setup there. I highly recommend it. Um, and this guy right here, and I put a few other little extra things in here, but having a first aid survival kit, they sell these at REI, really good thing to have. Uh, they've got a whole variety of stuff. I have a video about this, you can go check it out. But a whole variety of different uh, gadgets, doohicks, and uh, things that you can use to uh, make sure that everybody's feeling a little safe. When I hike, I don't screw around. I mean, safety is like... One of my big things. All right, so thermals number seven. Now the thing about thermals is there's different types of thermals. You have your lightweight, midweight, and heavyweight. So you want to keep that in mind there. Um, obviously the heavyweight is for more warmer thermal. These are my thermals I got them on Amazon. They're just fantastic. But the one things you don't want to buy is the cheap white ones you usually see sometimes. Those are made out of cotton and they're terrible. Do not recommend those at all. Um, you're going to get yourself in trouble if you buy those. Alright, so we're going to talk about thermals. Um, I have thermals. I, I, I wear 
I wear these guys uh, when it's really cold outside. I put these guys on. And uh, they got about 8% spandex in there, but most of it's polyester. I know, I'm going to talk about spandex in a minute. <laughs> Don't believe me, we're going to discuss spandex. I got these at REI, really cheap. I went and spent a pretty good, well, somebody else bought me some pretty expensive uh, thermals. And, you know, they're great. They work really great. But actually, I was warmer in these guys than I was in the expensive stuff from REI. I got these at Amazon for like $28. I took them down the Grand Canyon. It was like 19 degrees down there in some areas. It was 15 at the top, and they held up great. I was rocking it. I, I went to the car in the Grand Canyon wearing these. All these people are trying to break ice off their car, and I just had these on in my pants and my, and my base layer shirt, which is kind of like what I'm wearing now. And they really held up really great. And I was walking out there, and I'm like, had these on. I'm just like, what's happening? All right, basic hiking clothes number six. And we're going to go through some of the basics of having, uh, you know, a fleece, down, some quick dry shirts, pants, what kind of pants to buy. All right, so let's talk about clothes. That's number six, and I cannot talk about this enough. And I'm going to really go through this really secret thing about clothes. And there's, I don't know, maybe maybe it's a fake, you know, it's a it's bad going on. Maybe Maybe there's this big popular thing going on that people really like. I don't know what it is. And I see this all the time. And whoever's going out there saying this is what you wear when you hike, stop. Because it's not what you wear. And, and we're going to go through that with you guys. Now, I understand you're starting off, you're a beginner, you want to know what to buy, you don't have a lot of money, and you're trying to start off the best way you can, okay? There's even some awesome people out there that I know that are really good hikers, and you know who you are, um, that, that, that wear these. And I, I don't know what the deal is. Because it's not really what you want to wear. We're going to talk about spandex, okay? The stretchy pants, the spandex, the yoga pants. I don't know what it is. If you're out there for one day, if you're going to go out there and you're going to hike for one day, all right, why not, okay? But I'm wearing a recycled polyester pant, Columbia. These are my hiking pants that I wear. Now, I know a lot of people have curves and people don't. There are different people out there. But these are great. They're durable. They're water resistant. They can put up a lot. I can turn them into a swim trunk if I want to. And no, I can rely on them the next night. So the next day or even that night. They dry super quick. I put them in situations where it's been raining down. And then the rain stops where I have no sun exposure and they're drying. So these are amazing. A lot of that spandex stuff, the cotton stuff, that stuff gets wet. It holds up. It it puts in weight, you're going to have yourself a bigger problem on your hands. If you get stuck out there, or if you're going out and backpacking, and a lot of them are cotton, no go. Cotton is a killer. It's it's not good at all, okay? It's not like it's, you know, if you want to wear your sweatpants and you're watching, you know, you're watching Princess Bride and you're sweatpants on, you're having a good time at home, fine. It's not going to come up and bite you in the butt and kill you. But if you're out in the field, cotton is a killer. It gets wet. And when it gets wet, it takes forever for that stuff to dry. It sucks in water. It's taking about 80% of the water. And it takes forever. Not a good way to go. But the yoga pant thing needs, let's just end it. Okay? There, there, nothing wrong with yoga. Yoga and, and hiking go hand in hand. But the, the gear that you put on, the equipment that you're having, clothes that you wear, is, is going to do way worse for you than yoga pants. But if you're starting off, and that's all you got, Put on the yoga pants. That's fine. But but invest in some of these bad boys so you can look like me. So you want to start getting some good quality pants. Get some Columbia's. Get some polyester hiking pants. Those are great. Durable. Resistant. And water resistance. Good stuff you want to have on you. It's going to be good. Um, also you want to start investing in some quick dry shirts. Stuff's great. Get rid of all the cotton stuff. Beth wears cotton in the summer. If you want to do that, that's fine. I don't like it. I sweat like a pig. It soaks up. It's more weight. It's more issues that I have to deal with. Especially um, the other thing about stuff that's cotton, it all soaks up. And what it ends up doing is it can cause a whole lot of bad stuff to go on. Shafting and all kinds of other good stuff that could happen down below, which you do not want to have happen at all. Um, shafting is something we can discuss in another video. But um, I, believe me, it is a very uncomfortable. Uh, it's when you start rubbing against 
uh, your skin starts rubbing against and it gets all wet and it's just you know from the sweat it's not good um, and we were out in Mount Diablo one time we were doing a marathon hike and we got 20 miles in and my buddy started chaffing and he was not in a good mood um, and we had six more miles to go of push had a thousand more feet to climb up on that in the elevation and then we had to climb back down and he's shafting um, not a good thing so you, you have to and it was mainly because of what he was wearing and how much he was sweating and he wasn't regulating it right it, it could have been a multitude of different issues but um, we just we just had a roll we had to deal with it so um, even underwear okay you know there's a lot of cotton underwear out there it's cheap I know you can get like six pairs of cotton underwear for a pretty good price um, but it, it, ditch it okay when you're hiking not in general but just ditch it um, I wear a quick wicking underwear that gets the job done okay especially if I want to go jump on a lake and I know my underwear is going to dry <laughs> um, you want to get a down jacket as well those are really light that keeps you warm so start adding to that uh, collective clothing uh, thing I know I know you need hiking clothes I, I get it uh, but that's something you want to definitely start investing in hiking pools number five definitely something you want to buy pools so pools are going to re increase about 20 percent of the pressure you're putting on your knees pools are very crucially important now i probably recommend getting something on on amazon or go down to rei and see if they got something on sale down there you're going to want to invest a pretty good amount of money on pools you know say 70 80 bucks believe me i was the guy that wanted to go down to big five and get myself some pools that were like 20 dollars and uh well i buried all my pools Oh, sad day. Um, I've not really had a lot of good luck. I've gone through three of them. I should have just ended up, you know. So that's the thing. You, you buy low quality stuff, it keeps breaking on you. You buy more low quality stuff, it breaks on you again. You buy more quality low stuff, it breaks on you again. See where we're going? You see the pattern? So what ended up happening is like, oh, well, I've just spent $85 on crappy product because I've had to replace it three times versus, oh, I just spent. 90 bucks or a hundred dollars and getting really quality equipment and I never have to replace it again so that's gonna last a long time you just you just there's some stuff out there that's a way cheaper price like the thermals and it's gonna do a better job but it's few and far between okay so hiking hats number four it's a lot of hiking hats you can have you get the rim hats you get that Steven Spielberg kind of hat like I've got um, definitely uh, great thing to have in your uh, collective uh, equipment gathering there but hey there's lots of hats you can see here I don't know about that one in the left bottom left there I don't even know why I put that on there but hey it's it's cool you know if you're into that kind of thing also uh, you want to get beanies in the winter definitely warm nice wool beanie my wife makes wool beanies handmade so I got some pretty custom stuff that's pretty awesome all right let's continue on a hat like I have on right now Get a rim hat or get a, uh, a hat that's got a, a longer rim on it, one of those nice sun hats. You might look like Steven Spielberg when he was filming Indiana Jones, but believe me, it's going to save you big time. Get a, uh, a beanie for the winter. And one of the big important things that I, that I do is I've got my backpack right here, which we'll go to in a minute. But um, I'm going to have my hat here and I can take it off and I'm going to put it in my little side pocket. And boom it's game on i'm ready to go and get out there and start doing some hiking it's, it's just it's just going to make my life a whole lot better but having a nice rim hat knowing that you're semi-protected is, is really really important and if maybe you like to get some sunglasses that's entirely up to you you can do that too okay put that in about the same category um all right water reservoirs number three i mean look at that guy just full of excitement Oh wait, that's me. All right, so water reservoir, uh, that's number three. Water reservoir is so important. You ever seen that where people are walking around, they got backpacks on and they're drinking out of a tube? Well, that's because it's a water reservoir. And that allows you to have all that water cooked in one little area. And you've got about a two and a half liter, maybe a three liter. They also sell uh, one and a half liter. Go through a lot of water, which is really important, oh, by the way. Um, and we're in the summer now, so I usually carry three liters with me, so I always have enough water. Um, and this guy just comes right out, boom, like that. I've got all my water in there. It's all good to go. I got a video on this as well, so it's something you definitely want to check out. Pop that baby in there. And then this pack has got a little tie thing there. I can clamp it right up on the tie thing, and I can lock it right into play. And it's game on. Oh, it's Top Gun style. Um, and, and you're game on. It's, it's such an important thing to have with your gear. 
because um, water is your lifeline. It's something you want to have with you. All right, backpacks, number two. Gotta have a good backpack. All right, so backpack. Backpack's a really important thing to have. Um, it keeps everything in there. You have all your gear, put it all in there. And it's really, really one of the big things you want to do. And, and we'll talk about, Osprey is awesome. They are the, they are the Ferrari of backpacks, in my opinion. I love the way they do things over there. I love the way they have their products. I love how they make their products. They're really, the way their products are designed is in the mind of a hiker. Um, I just love their stuff. They, um, they have so many little pockets. And this guy got a pretty good price at REI. They had it discounted. And I got it for like 120 bucks. And I'm like, oh, I got to get this guy. And they can size you down there in REI. It was already in my size. And they had one of them. And I'm like, oh, I got to get it. It's important for your, for your packs as well. And I've got North Face packs as well. Those are really good. Um, the only thing with that is that it, um, North Face packs, you know, they tend to focus a lot of attention on the urban um, urban people as well so urban urban goers so some of their packs are more for like hey school or whatever but, um now they have different leader packs so what that leads is the higher the leader the more space you have i have a 65 osprey upstairs i'm not going to pull it out because it's my backpacking pack but this guy is about a 35 and um it says 36 but it's 35 in this size so the size can kind of bring it down a little bit um Works great, gives me a lot of space. Now you could probably get a less liter pack than this. You can get a day pack, which is probably gonna run you about 20 liters. And that'll work great too. You can you can do that too and, and get by. Um, awesome pack, it's got a lot of pack, a lot of pouches. I like to have something that's gonna strap in my front as well as my, my, my waist and have everything all nice and tight and locked in. You wanna make sure that pack is pushing up against your up into your gut kind of a little bit. Just having a pack with all your gear you can put in it, whatever style you like to do is, is always important. Comfort is important and important for your back. All right, and final one would be hiking boots number one. I don't know how many people I go out there like, hey bro, man, I'm gonna wear my Vans. And then a thunderstorm happens and you got flat-footed shoes and you've got a major problem. I don't know why people do that. And this is why we wear hiking boots. All right, number one is shoes. They invest in shoes. These are these are low cuts, okay? Vask is a really good company. They actually, uh, the Navy SEALs, SEAL Team 6 uses these guys. Oh yeah. I mean, that's not something that's gonna make a man wanna buy them, I don't know what it is. Because it made me wanna buy them. Vask is really awesome. They make great, great shoes. Awesome stuff, really heavy traction, good quality shoe. They got a nice protector at the front. You definitely want to break these in. It's important to break in your shoes. Very important to do that. But I love these guys. Solomon, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, they used to make skiing, well, they still do. They make skiing equipment, um, skis and what have you. And then they started directing their attention towards shoes. They're doing a pretty good job of it. These are really comfortable, lightweight, push a lot of water out. I'll leave a link down below. I think they still sell these on Amazon. But they are awesome. I really, really like these guys. Um, unfortunately, they are retired. I run them through the ground. Believe me, I hike a lot, so I go through shoes pretty quickly. Good quality stuff, great shoes. They, they just make really good products. I'm really impressed by them. Um, and then also they have the um, the high cut. So mid cut would be more lower here, more towards your ankle. And then they get the high cut, which is these guys. And I use these. These are my gaiters, though, by the way. I put these on to protect me. Um, through the front there, so not allowing any of that water to come through. Um, and I've taken them out there. Columbia, Columbia makes a really good product. And I took these out in um, uh, Grand Canyon when it was like snowy and icy and just all kinds of fun. Um, we were going all the way down and it worked out great. A little bit more heavier, so it's a more heavier weight, especially when you got a 30 on it, which is pounds. Um, but they're good. I like them. They're really good stuff. Really like that. I really like the Columbias. Um, and so whenever it's snowing, I'm out there, although we have some ice situation, these guys get geared up, and get sent in the gear, and they're ready to go get them on. Get wool socks, don't get any cotton socks. You want to ditch that too, just like your underwear. Uh, ditch that, not saying you don't want to wear underwear, but you know what I mean. Don't go with not wearing underwear. That could, a very variety of things could happen there. You know, you want to wear the wool socks. I like to wear the wool socks. Some people wear liners, and some people like them, other people don't. Liners tend to keep a lot of the blister out. 
Um, and if it's something that you like and it works for you, uh, why not, you know, why, why stop? So if there's something that's really working out great for you, then, then do that. Um, but don't wear cotton, and the reason I'm saying that is because it's going to cause more blisters and it's going to cause a whole world full of problems. Uh, cotton is very, very, takes a very long time to dry. Okay? Go down to REI, see what they think about the shoes. Have them all, try them out, try a bunch of shoes out. Have them uh, go check them out and uh, go from there. It's really important to do that because it allows you to kind of see and experiment with some of the shoes and see what's going to work best for you. And then you can buy them on Amazon if you want to. I mean, there's nothing, you don't have to buy over there at REI to go down there and you don't want to get a shoe. It's not going to do All right, thank you guys so much. Hope you enjoyed this video and get into hiking if you're a beginner. Start off, you have any questions for me, leave a question down below. I want to help you whatever I can to help you out. Um, also, if you guys have a different way of doing things, maybe there's some items that you want to get that's uh, different than the list that I have. Maybe maybe sunglasses are in there. Um, leave, yeah, let me know down below. Leave leave uh, leave whatever hey your list that you like to have on you when you're out there on a hike. Uh, maybe you live in a different environment. Maybe you, you have a different way of bringing things because the environment's different. So I'd like to know what what you like to bring out there. Maybe what your list might be different than what my list is. All right, guys, have a wonderful day. Thanks for checking out the video. I appreciate it so much. So, so much. My cat Mikey here is eating my car axe. You know, I'm doing all this landscaping and you're out already here eating my plants. Thank you. Go get it. Are you trying to be a cow today or? But um, these are the high cut and I and I wear these guys. What's going on? Um, <laughs> sir, aliens coming down here? What's going on?